All right, welcome aboard to another ICS Defense Force. My name is Dean Parsons, Certified Sense Instructor for ICS 515 and 418. In fact, that's what I'm doing at this very moment. I'm coming to you from the past so I can answer your questions in the future. I'm currently teaching ICS 515 right at this very moment. But still, please comment questions in the comment section. I will get to those momentarily after I finish the day's teach. So. Today's conversation, just like the last ICS Defense Force, we've been talking about control system environment incident response, OT, ICS control system incident response. Specifically, we've been focusing really in on the first and second phases of incident response. Now, last time we did focus on preparation, but also the planning aspect. And today, of course, you guessed it, we're focusing on the identification and detection of threats inside control system environments. Now, to that point in the second phase of incident response for ICS, we're talking about incident response teams, team members working together to consume and apply threat intelligence to see if there are threats in the environment with threat detection methodologies we're gonna cover in this episode. Now, when I say incident response teams, that could be members from ICS security teams, but also from the engineering side, the safety side, and also the physical security side as well, coming together, looking at a detection methodologies and also responding to incidents in incident response for ICS and OT. So specifically, we know that an adversary has to change something in the environment to in order to have some kind of an impact. Now with that, we do have four main threat detection methodologies we can deploy. Some organizations and facilities deploy all of them, some just a subset of them. So let's walk through exactly what these four threat detection types are and understand which can be applicable to your organization and your facility. Now specifically, we're gonna focus on the environment and the threat aspect. So under environment, if we focus on configuration analysis, we're gonna be spotting those changes that an adversary made happen to change in the environment, looking for that threat. If we do see a change, of course, yes, you are correct. Any change in the environment can spin off a ton of false positives with this methodology, but of course we can reduce that. The most important thing here is which changes are you going to be tracking? Specific to the ICS environment and using threat intelligence, I'll ask the question, are you detecting changes in the programmable logic controller project file? Anytime a PLC at the heart of the ICS is changed, that's cause for concern if it's not an authorized internal legitimate change. So it's definitely one of the things you wanna track moving forward. But of course, to reduce false positives, moving away from configuration analysis, we can deploy modeling in the environment, which means we can allow some changes over a period of time. So as an example, we can allow project files to be uploaded and changed in the PLC over X number of times and N number of days, reducing the false positives. Be careful with that one. You may have to tune it though, of course, as well. But again, detecting changes at the lower level of the control system. If we move over to the threat categorization, of course we have threat behaviors, which are TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, which give you a lot of return of investment operating under that kind of detection methodology versus the indicators. Under indicators, of course, we're only looking for indicators of compromise, which can be an IP address, a file name, a hash name, a, a hash value, and so on and so forth. In that case, with indicators, though, it's more of a reactive security strategy and threat detection because the adversary is already in the environment. So looking early on in an attack and the initial intrusion inside the ICS, maybe the CTPs and threat behaviors could be more applicable to your organization. Now, the ultimate goal as well when you're doing threat detection is to understand when you do find a threat, understand where the attacker is in the actual kill chain or where the attacker is in that um, intrusion, if you will, or attack chain. And so the ultimate goal here is to really understand in your organization how you define an actual threat in the environment and how you would typically respond to this threat. So inside the ICS, using those four technologies or methodologies for threat detection, you can detect the adversary potentially in the intrusion section of the actual attack. And in this particular case, it does not mean that the lights are going out, as an example, or that uh, you know water is not going to flow. But it does mean that the adversary potentially has malicious code in the environment, potentially has unauthorized access obtained 
to some level and also potentially can exfiltrate sensitive information from the control system out to build a follow-on attack, which could be damaging to the industrial control environment. Here's where exfiltration can really mean the adversary following up for a stage two attack in the ICS cyber kill chain. Beyond this, again, using those four methodologies for threat detection, you can detect the adversary in an, an area where they're going to be potentially causing loss of control of the environment. So the loss of visibility to control the process or loss of the process control itself. As you can see, we're progressing from an initial intrusion to a more damaging condition, which is potential loss of the control system ability and, and control of the uh, control system. Beyond that, of course, is what we're super concerned about is the adversary in the later part of an attack inside a control system environment, the manipulation of the control environment, potentially manipulation of safety instrumented systems, potentially to cause a physical damage inside the environment. So that's the main things we're concerned about from an ICS perspective, of course. Now, again, keeping these methodologies in mind, the four different technologies or techniques, I mean, to do threat detection and understanding where and where you would initiate instant response for your control system, as we see on screen, I do wanna ask this question for you guys, and please put your comments in the comments section. What do you think is the most important for your, or generally for any industrial control system threat detection? Is it visibility into the network? Is it visibility on endpoints? What technologies or processes may uh, be the most important from your perspective? So put those comments in there. I will address those momentarily. Now, I do wanna leave us today with a couple main questions from a detection and identification perspective in incident response for industrial controls. And they are as follows. Is your organization at some level in the control system consuming ICS specific threat intelligence? So that could be from free or, or paid for services at any level, uh, making sure that it is specific to the industrial control sector, the engineering assets is gonna be critical for threat detection when you apply that threat intel in those four techniques we talked about. The next question is which threat detection method are you going to deploy or have you deployed in your control system environment? Are you getting a ton of false positives today? Maybe it's time to look for a modeling aspect of threat intelligence and moving away potentially from the IOCs only and scoping using indicators to looking at the TTPs, how an adversary can move in the network uh, can be more applicable to your organization. So hopefully this has been helpful for today. Again, continuing the conversation of intrusion detection, but also threat to detection and inside uh, the industrial control environment. And again, next week, we are gonna continue the conversation about control system incident response, but I do wanna thank you for your time today. And again, next session, we're gonna talk about evidence acquisition, continuing this series. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. Please leave your comments and thoughts and questions because as soon as I finish this teach for today, I will address these questions you guys have. Again, as always, thanks very much for your time and have a great day.